Yashwant, you'd like to respond on, on ideology. You know, in some ways, I sometimes feel we've entered a post-ideology phase in some states. Look at Maharashtra. Who would have thought the Shiv Sena and the Congress would, would ever come together? The original Shiv Sena, and after Shiv Sena and the BJP. But, uh, but Yashwant, do go ahead. And then we actually, I have a technical question for you. But first, if you'd like to respond to Yogendra Yadav. Well, I don't, I certainly don't call myself secular, Barkha, because I am secular. I don't need to call myself secular. You know, when I say I am secular and if I say I am in strongest supporter of uniform civil code in this country, and if somebody says because you support UCC, you remain, uh, you seize the right of being called a secular, that's where the problem starts. So the thing is that, and I think there is a problem and we have read a lot of, you write for Washington Post, Barka. Uh, I mean, I, I work in US and we know, even Barack Obama said, that the damage that the liberals have done by calling large middle of the ground people illiberals just because they don't agree with them on some of the other point is acute. I think the this entire debate on secularism has to be rebooted. I agree with Yogenji on that one because I, I, I and I genuinely believe because I have read some of his pieces uh, asking for introspections on those lines because if there was a largely kind of, you know, uh, 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 an emotion or sentiment somewhere buried down there, which was looked down upon by a, 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 a certain majority of this country, uh, feeling that they are being marginalized on certain issues. This is the fear. Or this is something which was uh, tapped into by the BJP or the other side of the ideology. That's an ac entire ac different academic debate. And we we'll certainly, I would, uh, I would not just. Yogeni coffee se nahi chalega, khana khilana padega. Itna itni asani se maine chhodunga the seniors ko. So that's not the thing. But but yes, I largely agree with him. You know, these symbolisms, okay. these things, they 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 matter where they matter. But at the same time, I genuinely believe that the huge, huge, huge majority of this country is secular in nature. Overwhelmingly huge nature, majority of this country, including overwhelmingly huge majority of BJP supporters are secular. It is just that on certain on the other things, their cumulative voting point is something different. Yes, I do not take away the point, Yogenji. I am well aware of this right, extreme right politics where uh, the hate against uh, uh, minorities is only and only growing. And I don't like that. I oppose that tooth and nail. You know, it's not that. It's a, it, it's any for any good citizen, any any person who is who is, has a sensible nature would oppose that. Uh, you okay. know, so it's a different, let's not digress into a different uh, thing. But we'll, we'll have a, we'll have today, a, yeah. yeah. We'll have a separate program on that. Now, yeah. I've already taken more time than both of you have given me. So if I can spend the next three or four minutes only, and then I'll let you go, I promise. Coming back to, of course, just a little bit of the number crunching of the election. Yashwan, this one's for you, though Yogendra will understand it perfectly as well. Rajiv Sharma, how much percentage of a swing in votes is needed to actually arrest the seat to the other side? And I bring up this question, by the way, uh, because when you look at the BJP vote share in Karnataka, it can be a little confusing, right? Yes. You don't actually sense the anti-incumbency. Can we swing? Uh, can we change to the vote share graphic? Yashwan, then we look at the vote yeah, share. Yeah, they have retained their 36% vote share. Yeah, that's that's so, right. So yeah. How yeah, do you yeah, explain yeah. this? Yeah. So, so the simple explanation here is, Barkha, that if you can see the Congress upswing that is coming largely from the account of JDS. In other words, we can safely say that uh, uh, the anti-BJP voters in Karnataka who did not want a fractured mandate, which would have given a BJP another Operation Lotus to work on, they swung to and stick to the Congress and gave them enough swelling to win this election. I think people do not want a fractured mandate anywhere, anywhere under the sun. So this is a one very clear signal that in the anti-incumbency platform, the anti-BJP vote for this particular election decided to swing in favor of the largely or large section of that came from the JDS. Uh, we will have to be very careful on to look into it, how it happens. <laughs> goes away from here, from, from further from here in the next 12 months. 
Okay, and Yogendra Ji, a question for you. Uh, in Karnataka, many communities says Binu were impacted by different uh, communal and identity issues, hijab, Tipu Sultan, church attacks, reservation, quota policies. And then there was the Amul Nandini issue that threatened local pride. Uh, did you know? How do you see these issues? Do you think they were non-issues in the end, Yogendra Ji? <coughs> yeah, sorry, you're like, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah. We somehow tend to assume that uh, during uh, that elections get decided during the campaign. Uh, most elections actually get decided before the campaign. And I thought uh, many of these issues were sort of, I mean, there were issues, especially those raised during the campaign. I don't think election campaign made a huge difference this time. But one final thought before I leave Barka. Yeah. One of the most beautiful sites in a democracy, and that's what keeps one's faith in democracy, is the site of a and a, a, a vote, an ordinary voter standing up to power. And what we witnessed, and this is what brought me to politics, political science, political activism, 1977, and the defeat of the all powerful Congress. The sight of that brought me to politics. And today I see a glimpse of that. On the one side, you have BJP with its money power, absolutely unaccountable, unlimited money power with the entire mainstream media in its pocket in a way which is utterly shameful, with election commission willing to blink an eye whenever needed. Uh, so they, and, and of course the IT and the ED and everything on the other side is an ordinary voter. And finally, the victory of a voter over power, nothing can be more ennobling in democracy than that. That is what I see and that's what makes me so very happy. Uh, before you go, I'll just give Yashwant also 30 seconds to make his point, and then I'll say thank you to both of you. Yashwant, go ahead. You're on mute, Yashwant. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Give me a second. Let me unmute you. Uh, you're at mute your side. You muted yourself. All right, sorry. Ahead. I will simply yeah. say same as above. Whatever Yogenji said, plus addition to one point, EVMs work fine. Let's stop discussing that once and for all. EVMs just work perfectly, Barkha. They end I up giving Yogendra perfectly Ji, nice... I think Yogendra uh, Ji is trying to say something that he didn't question EVMs, but I think Yashwan... No, 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 I'm not talking about Yogi. Yeah. I'm just adding yeah. to whatever yeah. Yogi said. I am adding to because I know every time there are elections, there are so many conspiracy theories of EVM. And I have been uh, always a staunch supporter of e Election Commission and the EVM entire practice of India. So, and just one point before I go, Barkha. Before the EVM, still the point we used ballot paper, more than 90% of the election mandates were pro-incumbent in nature. Whilst ever since the EVM has been introduced, more than 90% of the verdicts in India have been anti-incumbent in nature. I think we should grow beyond this. Paper, uh, you know, VVPAT, EVM and all those kind of things, we should keep on discussing how to make this further better. But, yeah. you know, for, for with all sensitivity, let's not go back in that, that kind of discussion anywhere, because I know a, a lot of discussion will keep on happening. Well, as Ravi Shastri would say, after every match today, cricket has won. I think we, it's safe to say uh, the power of the voter has won. Every time yeah. the voter reminds us that she can actually have the power of to bring in and bring and you know oust governments, that is uh, the important thing uh, to remember. Uh, Yogendra is pointing to wake up Karnataka behind him, uh, and we this say is the thank campaign you. for which I came to Karnataka. I didn't I come see. here to analyze elections. I came I here for this campaign. No, of course you and are. This you is are... what Karnataka has won. Okay, well, your side, uh, the side you support, Yogendra Ji has won. But of course, we must be as welcoming when the side you don't agree with wins uh, fair and square. That is indeed the beauty of democracy. And it has been a pleasure talking to both of you, Yogendra Yadav, Yashwan Deshmukh. Thank you so much for your wisdom and your perspective.